We're at Otis College of Art and Design, and my name is Chris Warner. Uh, today we're going to work with measuring the figure in life drawing. Here's a demonstration and discussion of methods for making sure that our observational drawings of the human figure are proportionally accurate. This technique is often referred to as measuring, but it's not as though we're taking out a tape measure and measuring the length and width of our model in inches or millimeters. Rather, we will select an element from the figure that we will then use as a unit to compare with and judge by both the individual parts and the figure drawing as a whole. First, let's look at the canon of proportions of the human figure, as it is described and illustrated in most anatomical references. Typically, the unit of measurement or comparison being used is the length of the head. Getting the proportions correct in a pose such as this seated pose on the right is a bit more challenging than the erect standing figure on the left. Here then are summary sketches or gesture drawings of two poses, one standing and one seated. I believe it's important to draw initially using our native observational skills and then subject the light sketch to an analysis of comparative proportions and dynamic balance. First, assess the angle observed from common point to common point across the figure. For example, the horizontal axis line from shoulder to shoulder, or hip joint to hip joint, knee to knee, elbow to elbow, and so on. Using your pencil held between your eye and the model to first observe and then record the precise angle of the line between common points. This is what we call axis lines. To observe and record plumb lines, which is another word for vertical reference lines, hold your pencil in a perfectly vertical position at a distance from your eye so that it encompasses the length of the figure, reaching from the top to the bottom. I encourage my students to observe and record as many as three plumb lines on a drawing, but for sure start with one that descends through the middle core of the upper torso. Also record angle sightings that run from point to point throughout the figure. Remember, your pencil or angle sighting instrument must always remain perpendicular to your line of sight. Like hands on a clock, they only record two-dimensional directions. Create an envelope of angle sight lines around the entire figure. To observe consistently accurate ratios or proportions, we must be careful to keep the distance from our sighting instrument to our eye always the same when counting units. So lock your elbow so that your arm is fully extended. Let's use the head length as our unit of measurement. With your sighting arm fully extended, position the tip of your pencil at the top edge of the model's head and adjust your thumb down to the bottom edge of the chin. Now keep your arm fully extended, always the same distance from your eye, and begin the process of counting the number of head lengths in the full length of the figure. As you observe each new head length position or unit, make a mark at each corresponding interval along your vertical plumb line. Now working off the length units, create a grid of squares, two units wide, with a central vertical plumb as the midline. We may observe the width of or lateral distance across the model by locking our arm at full length, finding the head length, and then with our arm still fully extended, rotating our hand so our pencil is horizontal. Now it is possible to count how many head lengths or units wide something is. Often our observed ratio of units must include fractions such as a half head or a third of a head. These smaller fractional units are guesstimations at best, yet they add to your overall analysis in a collective way. Once the modular grid has been established, you may check the relative size and position of any part of your figure to confirm that it is proportionally consistent with the unit of measurement and the figure composition as a whole. For instance, how long is the foreshortened leg on this seated figure? Remember, your sighting instrument cannot mimic the three-dimensional thrust of the foreshortened limb. Imagine your pencil is like a propeller which can only turn on a single axis. Dial your pencil to the angle aligning with the limb and compare its length to the unit of the head. All of these lines that I'm making now are lines that should be drawn lightly. I'm drawing a little heavier here because of the demonstration just so you can see what I'm doing. But in the end, you're gonna draw these a little bit more lightly. But at the same time, uh, I consider these drawings to help build out the complexity of the drawing in the end. And they're almost like a three-dimensional matrix. They start to create a palpable sense of space. Um, so rather than a cleanly single line outlined flat shape, you have, just through the employment of, of these angle sites, plumb lines, and modular measurement, 
uh, you've created this sort of uh, sense of, of, of a space that you can enter, walk around, and, and emerge through the other side.